Hi, this is Jenny Walker and welcome to Closet Conversations. Today I want to talk to you about Poshmark and how to identify quality people to follow. Now, I first joined Poshmark in 2013. I registered. I think someone had sent me a link and you'd get $5 off if you joined, something like that, of your first purchase way back in 2013. How do I know that? I looked it up on my profile and it says when I joined, but I wasn't active at all on the app until 2017. That was the year I started using it and made my very first sale. I've been using it off and on for about a year, about 12 months, and very heavily in the last six months. Right now, I have about 36,000 followers, and I'm following, though, many more people than that. And one of the things I've worked out in my own mind is how to identify people to follow, because it's an endless sea of millions of people inside that app. But they're not all active. They're not all... Uh, people I think that would be good to follow in terms of you've got to sort down those millions of people into some sort of identifiable group instead of just randomly finding people to follow. And so what I started doing is identifying groups and categories of people that made sense sense to me. So one of the things I did was was the most obvious thing in the world, which was to follow people who are uh, recommended users, what it used to be that they're uh, ambassadors now. So it's under the find people section. You can find people who are recommended to follow. And that's, these are all people who've made ambassador status. So obviously they're very active on the app. And so that's a good place to go and follow people because chances are if they're active enough to reach ambassador status, they're active enough to want to get engaged in your closet. So I go to the recommended user, uh, suggested user slash recommended follower section and follow all the ambassadors that come up. Also new people to the app. This is a really great way to engage with people who they themselves need some um, encouragement to get involved in the app and you know they're new and probably excited to learn more about it. They might have really interesting things for sale. And that's always a good thing to help introduce people who are new and to engage them in the app, welcome them, share some of their items in their closets. That's always a great place to start. And one of the things I noticed, and I and I found this out actually by listening to YouTube videos, but I kept seeing people had an exclamation point in their name. So instead of it saying Jane Doe, it was exclamation point, exclamation point, or it was exclamation point. Jane. I mean, it was, you know, there was this use of it. And I saw in a YouTube video that people change their name to these exclamation points so that they'll be at the top when you go in to look who someone's followers are or who they're following. Those people are going to be at the very top because they have an exclamation point instead of, say, Jane Smith. So you're going to see those names first. So when I found out that people did that, I went in and I changed my name and I changed to those exclamation points and sure enough I saw a lot more people following me and so I started looking to find out who are those people who are those people with those exclamation points at their name and I would certainly if someone's savvy enough to know that shortcut chances are they're very active on the app and savvy enough and probably are going to be a really good person to get engaged with now, how do you find those people with the exclamation point? Well, you can't actually search on that because I've tried many, many times. So um, the way to find those people is going to be by going to other groups of people you want to follow and then looking at their following and followers list and starting at the top and following down uh, until you're done with those um, exclamation points. One of the things I also learned is that a lot of people had all kinds of creative names in their title because under the suggested user area you get may I haven't counted it up maybe you get 10 names at a time maybe 15 but there's many more people who are at ambassador status and a lot of people who reach that status like to put that in their name and their title and it'll say ambassador status or ambassador or top 10 or all kinds of things in those names so one of the things I did is I searched on the words ambassador I reached, um, I, I searched on the term Poshmark. I searched on the term Poshmark Ambassador. I searched on the term um, 
top seller. And if you go and you start looking at how people have identified themselves, you know, some people are, are saying, you know, make an offer. I mean, there's all kinds of terms that people are using in that search bar to catch your attention. But to me, it also uh, indicates that these are people who are savvy with the app, heavily engaged on the app, and would be good users to follow. And so I do a lot of searches trying to think of these terms that would help me find people who are proud enough about their achievements to say, hi, I'm ambassador status. And that's the most important thing. And they've listed it up in the top. So I followed tons and tons of people that way. And it's a lot easier to find those who are ambassadors by that name title than to wait for them to show up in the recommended user section. Contest winners are a terrific place to meet people who are heavily engaged on the app and very active. They usually promote that list of the winners the day after contest. Um, people who attend these posh parties that get talked about in the blogs and things like that, excellent group to follow. People who host parties. If you go into the host picks or look at any of these parties that are coming up, there's always going to be a group of people who are hosting that, and those are wonderful people to follow. When you look under your feed, you're going to see people who have shared your listings. Those are excellent people to follow and also share listings for them. You're going to find people who've liked a listing in your closet. Those are excellent people to follow and, of course, to share their listings. You're going to see people who've put things in a closet, people who've bought from you. These are all great groups of people to ensure that you immediately follow and get engaged with. And I think by identifying these groups of people, you're going to find uh, really quality people to, to get engaged with, to get active with, to see what's in their closet. And in doing so, hopefully they would return the favor and be engaged with what you're doing in return. Uh, the sharing favor and things like that with what you have to offer in your closet. Now the Poshmart app is certainly very different from selling on eBay where I've been selling since 2003. It requires a lot of time and energy and activity. You don't just set it and forget it and hope to be active on this app. Certainly not when you don't have a lot of inventory or activity or you're new to the app. And my goal is to get the same amount of items on the Poshmark app as I have on eBay and truly be multi-platform. And so if it's good enough to list on eBay, it should be good enough to list in Poshmark and vice versa. And I shouldn't have any inventory that I don't feel could be on both platforms and also um, have the aesthetic that I want for my store. And what that also forces me to do is to purge items or try to clear out items that really don't represent the Jenny Girls Closet brand and what I want to say for myself now that I would have uh, branding myself on two different apps. So there are actually things I have not listed on Poshmark because I don't think it fits. I don't think it looks right in the closet. And those are things that I'm busy either um, donating or clearing out through an auction in my eBay store so that I can reach that goal of every item gets listed in both apps. Certainly, the social aspect is really is really nice with um, with Poshmark. I mean, people are they leave little comments in my store, and and I always respond to people and thank them. And I'm still very new to using the app, even though I joined a long time ago. So I'm not, you know, I'm always surprised when people take the time to say something cute or say hello or say that I have a nice closet because I haven't actually done that yet. I haven't actually told someone I liked their closet yet, and I guess I'm because I've been so busy trying to push out my own, I haven't really, you know, done that. Although I could, and I think I should at some point, uh, spend more time looking to see what other people are doing. And that's it. This is just a short and sweet little talk today. I think there's tons of ways to find, uh, creative ways to find good people to follow on Poshmark. And by, it really, it is about engagement. It is about the social aspect on this. And People are putting in a lot of hours sharing and engaging and liking and listing and sorting and all kinds of things. And so I think if those are the qualities you need to be successful on Poshmark, then it's going to be really good to follow those people who um, you have a clue are very active in that way by their, their names, by their activity on the site and things like that. 
As I learn more about Poshmark, I certainly will share it with you. I'm still very new on the app. I'm still trying to get my feet wet. Uh, my goal is to get a thousand items up on Poshmark and have a thousand items on eBay. I have around, right now about 436 on Poshmark and um, 800 and around 70 on eBay because they keep selling. And so I have to list more than what sells in a day to get the number up. So that's really good. And I will definitely reach that goal. And then once I reach a thousand, I think the thing I'm going to do next is to either go for 1200, um, maybe 1500, maybe even 2000 be the next goal for that. Because the more inventory you have to sell, you know, the easier it is to chip something off the block to reach a, a revenue goal you might have for the month. Um, or I might just keep it at a thousand and say, okay, this is kind of my threshold and I'll just keep replenishing and buying things to keep me at this level. And I think also um, I'll be doing other podcasts on Poshmark as I, as I figure it out and kind of think it through and figure out what I want to say about it. I'm learning a lot about pricing. I'm learning a lot about what sells and, you know, there's a lot of clues by looking at just who has even liked your item. And if you've got something nobody's even clicked a like on, that should tell you something about what is good inventory for Poshmark. And I have things on there that have absolutely no thumbs up at all that have been on there for a year. And so that tells me that either, I think it tells me it's not desirable at all because I don't think it's the price. I mean, people will like something that's overpriced just to remember it and if it doesn't have any thumbs up after a year, that's that's pretty much a sign that uh, you gotta you gotta move on from that inventory and get something else. Anyway, more insights on Poshmark later, um, but just my my little bit for now. And this is Jenny Walker with Closet Conversations. I am owner and stylist with Jenny Girls Closet, uh, which is a reselling uh, business. I'm also co-owner of the luxury consignment store, Walker Vide and Luxury Consignment in Pasadena, California. I'm on all social media, so you can find me if you need to be in touch. And if you like what you've heard here, please give it a five-star review, a thumbs up. I'm still new at the podcasting, and I really need to get those reviews in and up so that I can ensure that I stay relevant in the rankings and people who are interested in information on Poshmark, reselling, and consignment can find me via this podcast. Thank you so much, and I look forward to having you tune in on the next edition of Closet Conversations.